Okay, so we'll be taking a look at the instance of today. Uh, I mean the particle system. Uh, so if I just want to visually show this to you, say for example, I have a few particles which have been created. Okay. Uh, and I probably have a geometry over here. Okay, uh, so we have a geometry which is probably uh, any kind of geometry. It might it can be let's say arrows. It can be uh, moths. It can be insects. It can be fish. Uh, that will be the instance geometry, and I will need to redraw. If I need to redraw this on the particles, I will be able to do that, and that will be in simple terms uh, called as instance. Okay. Uh, so when the geometry is being redrawn on the particles, it will not actually involve any surface information. It will just be just uh, redrawn geometry which will be much faster than the actual geometry so while in this case if we are just using geometry uh, with all its surface information vertex spaces it will be too difficult for us to create a flocking system okay uh, which will be taking a quite a toll on your system. Rather, I'll just be instancing the geometry on to the particle, which will be redrawn, which will be very fast, fast to render, and which will be one more quicker. Right. So uh, that is what we will be looking at today. Let me just raise this. Uh, just to talk about the instancing a bit, uh, in, in terms of definition, an instancer is basically similar to duplicated object, but the difference is it's not an actual object. So once you redraw it on the particles, it's, like as I said, it won't be an actual object. It won't have any surface information. Uh, it will just be a redrawn version of the object, the original object, of course, which from there we have instances, instance it will act like as a master. So any changes made to the master will reflect on the instance object. All right. Uh, so let's have a look at this practically. So let's create a polygon cube once again. And Oh, subdivision for it. Also create uh, an emitter. Right, and then I have emitter to a few particles are in it. Go to the Windows settings, preferences, time slider, play every frame. This will be the focus. And I want this to be now instance on this, this particles which I'm looking at. Uh, so the thing is select the geometry, go to in particles and create an instance. Okay. Yeah. You can see the PQ, the polygon cube which I have selected. That is a secure. And this is where now I see the cube is being uh referenced onto each of these particles and the particles will definitely be lying at the center of each of these cubes which you can see over here right so uh so what you see in front of you is this is the actual geometry and this is the redrawn geometry of the surface which doesn't actually have the surface information so if i'm trying to select it what am I selecting is only the particles with it. Okay, it's not actually selecting geometry. So it's the geometry. So within the instance, it 
you can't catch hold of the geometry and do it. So if anything which needs to be done, will need to be done on this surface. So uh, let's say for example, I just select a couple of uh, faces in here. Right? That leaves spaces kind of smooth those. Those will reflect the instance geometry of it, right? So there you see. Going to reflect on those surfaces. Uh, so the idea here is when you have such a lot of cubes, now it's quite impossible to kind of uh, have an actual geometry and duplicate it in this form. We can duplicate, but uh, it it won't be uh, advisable in the EG because that's going to take a lot of time to render and it will be heavier on the system. So rather the geometry is being instanced and it's also is uh, it's uh, it's it's being redrawn very quickly onto the view here. Yeah. Uh, it will be rendered very fast on the uh, when you do go on to render this. Uh, yeah, so the, that basically how the uh, geometry can be instanced. Now, another thing when you are instancing the geometry is also talking about behavior particle instance because uh, what we need is we also need this geometries to behave in certain fashion. So they might they might need to move in a certain way. They might need to ripple certain objects and so so that is that is something which also can be attained within the particles so which we will take a look at the first example which will be starting off is a very simple example of creating shooting arrows so take a polygonal plane and this is where the particles or the arrows might be shooting for. So I'll just give it uh, angle and move it to the behind X. And uh, in this case, I'm setting up the same in such a way that my X axis will be the front axis. Now, that is something which will be very important when you are doing an instancing uh, and uh, the geometry ordinary should be facing in the x direction so say like for, for example if i am creating a polygon and if i want to create a arrow i will need to see that it's oriented correctly so in this case i'll just do a quick uh, model of a arrow Increase the height a bit. Probably don't know what that many segments. It will be good. Yeah. The and the scale is. So, yeah, so I want this to be, let's say, oriented this way. Make it in a negative direction. Right, so let's orient it in the x direction in this way. Uh, 
want to edit MX some particles from here. So go to the particles. You, I'm going to, use, going to use the legacy particles in this case. So create emitter. This will be particles emit from an object. So this and this one of 50 numbers in there, just say create. And I'll see the few particles on it. Okay. I have one that there, there should be some speed to these particles. So maybe 20 will be good enough. And I also want them to dip down. So as they move up in there, they should also come down with the help of the gravity. So I'm adding the gravity to them. So they kind of move down. You'll also be creating a polygonal plane. So, uh, where they will be, they will be colliding. Okay, I want them to collide now. If you can see in the right view, uh, you will see that they kind of are converging at a point. So, when they emit from the uh, polygonal plane area, they gradually move up, but kind of uh, kind of converge uh, at one place. And the reason behind that is uh, because the speed is the same for all the arrows, so they kind of tend to come and and collide at one singular point. I want a bit of a randomness in the speed, so let's take this to maybe. But two or four, I don't know. Let's see what will work. This I think the new 10 will be good. So, do this now, and you can see there is there is this few particles now uh, which have a lesser speed will tend to uh, move closer to the ground, which is much more stronger speed will move away, okay, you will move lock away from the, okay. okay, so the point here is now to replace these, and it will, it will it's simple, you just need to select the arrow, just name this as an arrow, right, um, and the particles, Instance uh, arrow. Okay. This is where now I can see uh, these being, these are emitting and uh, they are not aligned correctly though, right? So because uh, it, it, that's how it's been instanced. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this is not, not real geometry. These are this is a surface which is being drawn from the original geometry. So if I need to do any any edits, I need to work on this. All right. So why are they facing like this? Uh, so we have two nodes. So one is the instance and node which gets created. So we have some uh, level of control in this. We do have some attributes, so okay. But then we also have a few attributes for the instance or on the particle. So if I move to the particle shape node. I'll be able to see the instance of rollout. And within the instance of rollout, I have a few of the rotational uh, options. I do have some general options over here. Within the rotational option, I do have a direction, which is currently none, but I will change this to velocity and then it's going to change its direction pointing upwards. Uh, this is completely all right. Uh, the reason for this, uh, now if you could see, though it's it's going in the correcting, correct direction, it's not facing actually the way we want it to face. So I'm going to go to the component mode and kind of rotate this. Mm. 
this direction. What you need to do is to place this. Now you can see that it's kind of moving in the correct direction. Yeah. Uh, one other thing which we will also I will also like to mention over here is <coughs> mention over particles. No, let me first. This works. Yeah, now it's fine. So if we can see over here, we see that there is an particle over here so basically that's what is driving these arrows and that is the pivot basically so just to have a clear look at this i will go to the particle shape now and try to change uh, the particle render type to spheres so that we kind of know where exactly it is located right so my located not exactly center the reason being that is this object so what i'll do is just click on of it again select it let's try to move it like this so it's not the center like more than center so maybe because while i tried to rotate it it didn't want to take it so there it is there is there is the pivot center now i will want to move this okay, to the uh, 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 somewhere around the tip uh, which probably will be crossing the tip really because i want this arrows to be colliding with the pin and when they collide they will not be colliding the actual geometry because this is the geometry redraw redraw remember it is going to actually collide with the particles so i want to make this look like as if the arrows are being penetrated in the ground that's why i have the pivot uh, kind of located over here and since the particle located over here just behind the tip all right so uh, maybe maybe i want that there should be a bit more speed so get the speed to 30. it is nice the ground over here this little bit all right so yeah of course now i want them to collide with this plane so now i'll just select the particles so select like the plane and make light that is going to yeah, you're going to see where the particles collide and they kind of bounce from the plane reason behind that is resilience meaning bounce is not when it is zero they will not bounce but uh this is not how it will work though okay uh, because um uh, this is not real collisions which are happening okay? this is not in geometry which is colliding with the object is the instancer which is colliding so in this case what we will need to do is fake this okay what what i'll need to do is i'll need to use another tool in within the end particles is uh in order particle collision event editor now particle collision event editor will basically will be spawning more particles or it will be spawning the particle based on any event okay on event 
So here our event is collision, right? So on colliding, what's going to happen? Okay. So what are the particles? Your particles are particle one. They will be doing collisions. On collisions, you want to emit. How many particles? You want to just emit one. Do they have spread? They might not have spread. There might be nothing happening. Okay? You don't have, you don't want to inherit velocity. So this is basically is an event type where you want to define that on collisions, wherever it collides, how many particles you need to create. Do you want to create one or do you want to create 10? Maybe you want to show that the particle is colliding and it creates a spark. So in case of spark, for each of the dots, I will need that many particles. So if I want to create five sparks, I will be creating five. But in this case, I don't need spark. In this case, I just need a single geometry. So, so here is the spread. Uh, I will just reduce the spread over here. I will just want one particle and the original particle will die. Okay. And let's play and check it. Okay, I didn't create an event. Of course, I will need to create an event. So I see, I can see that there is no event created. I will just create the event. Okay. So when I create an event, it creates particles too over here. See. So there were no particles. Earlier. So now if I take a look at this again, you will see that there is an particle two which is getting created, right? Now I'm seeing original particle die. If I leave, if I turn it off, I'll see still see the original particles, uh, which basically is something which I don't want. I want them to stay. So if I turn off the emit. I don't see the particles in, right? I just see the particles getting tied off as soon as they intersect. If I turn on M8, I will see the particle coming back. And it's basically doing some random stuff. I don't want any random particles. Okay, so now this we are creating one single particle wherever the original particle collides it's just creating a mark and that spot mark means it's not marking it but it's creating a, a second particle wherever it's colliding okay, so that's completely all right i'll just close it but how do i show that they are kind of uh, colliding in the space and this just having their position maintained. Okay. So here is where I'll duplicate this one with the second one. All right. And I'm going to install this one into the second one. Select it. And go to the instancer. Uh, in this case, it will be particle shape too, right? So I just say create. I do have a second instance. I just rotate it in the direction. Now I'm going to play it. Insert this one and the first. And it, it's basically just creating a second instance around the second particles which are really collided.
so uh, one more thing what I will be doing is going to be emitter and this work with the particle weight. So in this case, uh, I wanted maybe the rate to reduce. I don't want any more particles up. Just use forty one. At forty one, it will just go back to zero. So there's not any more particles emitting after the fact. So this is uh, is a very short introduction to what will be the instancing and where we will be using the instancing. Uh, and oh, uh, so this will be one good example where how an instancing can be used, and which is not actually using a geometry as such. Uh, it it is the original geometry which is being read on. And we just are giving sort of a behavior to it where it it launches in the air and then kind of and kind of goes and collides with the surface and comes to rest. Yeah. You probably won't want to try this once. Right. So take a look at it. Keep practicing.